G'day from the Media Centre here at the Las Vegas Grand Prix and it was a very sad start today to proceedings with FP1 called to a halt when Esteban Ocon dislodged a water cover and Carlos Sainz ran over it. More in a minute. Well actually eight seconds. What do I know? Well, I was actually not too far away from the incident. However, I noticed that the cars had stopped running and I looked around over my shoulder and saw a red flag. And about the same time, my son sent me a note saying, it's been an incident just down at Paris and I'm staying at Paris. So I head in that direction on foot then I can see all these marshals picking up stuff off the road. So I get close to them, get out my camera, and then I realize that there's a small dent in the road. Well, it didn't take long for the course marshals to arrive in several cars, and there was some mad inspecting of that particular cover, and I thought it was a manhole cover. It was only about that big, but it turns out it's not only that size diameter, it's about that thick. So at some point, I see this particular fellow walk back with the item in question. They replace it to see what's gone on and then the uh, next thing I know somebody's got a tube of, now I thought it was silicon but I would hazard a guess it wasn't now, and uh, they've tried bulking up an area there with that manhole cover in place and then out comes a blowtorch to I imagine set that particular material. Could have been some sort of cement and at that particular time there were other course marshals inspecting another water cover some 10 meters away. Now bear in mind I'm the only photographer on the inside of the track and there's no photographer on the outside. It's very hard to get to that particular spot. Now I posted a pic straight away and a lot of you said oh Kim you actually uh, alluded to these manhole covers in your last video which I did make mention of because I remember vividly Lance Stroll cleaning one up I think it was 2019 in Baku. I was just around the corner and took some photos of that, well the cleanup of that at the time. So it's not the first time this has happened. I must have stayed there for probably 40 minutes and there was always some sort of work going on at that particular site. And then I'm hearing different reports saying that uh, the session's been called off understandably and FP2 would not be running at midnight. Well there's some rumours anyway. And as it sits now it is 12.11 so clearly we're not running but I understand we may be running as late as 2am and with perhaps a 90 minute session now. No doubt you're watching this after the event so you know whether or not what I'm hearing has come to fruition. Could there have been a worse start for the Las Vegas Grand Prix? I doubt it very much and I'm really sad because there's a lot of expectation about this. There's a lot of very excited people here and about an hour after the incident happened I returned to the media center and I could see people streaming out of the track. They weren't at all interested, well, the ones I saw anyway, in the hanging around and then quite peculiarly I entered the paddock and I managed to sneak in, I don't know why everybody was being corralled, they weren't allowing them into the paddock. There were a lot of very angry people wanting to get in and out, but it was a stalemate. Another thing, we always have a driver's briefing an hour and a half after the last session on a Friday, or in this case a Thursday. So if we get out on track, do 2.30 to 3.30, at 5am technically, we're going to see all the drivers going to a driver's briefing. I can't see they'll be too happy about that. Now I'm no aerodynamics expert and I've not watched any of the television coverage so my gut feel is that that suction from a car has lifted that water cover and Carlos has run straight over it. But one thing's for sure, there'll be very few people happy with the outcome of tonight and a lot of very disappointed spectators and people who've paid big money to be here. And get this, security is now kicking people out of the Sphere grandstands because they say the track is now closed, despite these people having paid to watch two free practice sessions today. So it looks like this session will be run just for the media. Moving on, I was under the impression that people were gonna be able to walk on the unused side of the strip while track sessions were on, but no, as you can see here, while the track is hot, in other words, locked down, ready for racing, the strip was completely closed. Also, a number of the escalators going up and down to the bridges we're not operating. And I guess that's a sad thing if you wanted to catch a sneaky glimpse of track action, you could easily just feign being on an escalator to go from top to bottom. But no, certainly in two instances I saw, that was not the case. Perhaps one group of people that will be happy are the casinos because they will probably get a sizable proportion of those tens of thousands of people heading back to the casinos and wagering some cash. One thing I did notice during that very short session was the sparking coming down the strip. I didn't expect that. I thought with a recently laid road, 
very flat, we would get very little, if any, but uh, delighted to see a bit of that happening. And had we have gone longer, I would have, uh, I expected, got some much better photos than these. Over at the Sphere, what did that look like? Pretty darn good. And this is probably my favourite design on the Sphere, which uh, the F1 people have taken over this weekend with all their own content. Other stories here, uh, Jacques Villeneuve got married today, yes, to Julia Mara. He got married in the chapel, which is at one end of the paddock. I was initially told he was unaware, but no, I think he probably knew about it, and well done to him for tying the knot with Julia, and in such an interesting and quirky place. Roman Grosjean was also here, he's doing some work commentating, and I often get a nice big smile from the genial, well, IndyCar driver now, used to drive Formula One, as you know, with Haas, who are loving being in Haas Vegas. Steve Aoki, yes, he was in the paddock. He was also featured artist yesterday at the launch. And uh, he's quite a colourful character, certainly in his clothing and in the reaction that I got when I saw him in the paddock. Now, I'm going to say this again. That paddock is way too dark, and I think it's a, it's a big oversight on the organisers' part. And I did hope that after Wednesday, when things were very dark, that they might have actually done something about it. But no, we dipped out. So photographing anyone in that paddock is tricky and oftentimes I'll look at someone and if there is a bit of light behind them you can't tell who they are. I missed Kevin Magnuson completely yesterday. He got past me and then I got a shaft of light on his face and yeah normally I wouldn't have missed that shot and I did laugh when I went into the moat to shoot that first session because one of the marshals came over and said oh you have to have a blue band like us. I said no we don't. We just need the tabard and this particular thing. Well, no, no, you have to have the blue band. So we had a little bit of backwards and forwards there for some minutes until he rang a higher power and it was confirmed that no blue wristband was required. I also got a comment from someone who was in one of the Bellagio stands saying that their $3,000 ticket provides them with obstructed viewing, which is very disappointing if that's the case. And I did have a look today and I thought, well, if you were situated in one of the sections, Yes, I think that might well be the case. But on another matter, I do happen to know that one of the stands that was originally scheduled to go up along Coval Avenue was, in the end, not erected because they realised that that had obstructed viewing. So they moved those people to better seats in different stands. Look, I didn't think I'd be doing a video tonight, but with the advent of that disappointing disruption to FP1, and the delay, well I gather it's a delay and not cancellation of FP2, I have no doubt that there are a lot of very disappointed people around. Do I want to be hanging around here till 5am? No, I want to go to bed. But at the moment we're just in a state of flux, wondering as to when we'll get a message about what is going on. Now if you have four seconds to spare, could you please subscribe to the channel? There's no money involved, all you have to do is subscribe. And like this video too, it helps with the algorithm. About 30 metres behind me is the media canteen. I'm about to go there and fill my face while you check out some of my other content and merchandise. Thanks for watching. Stay passionate.